So here again on Ice Time TV for our weekly catch up with Devils player coach Andrew Lord and uh, Andrew, good to see you. Recovered from the uh, the Calgary experience. <laughs> yeah, had a had a really good time there. Uh, we definitely got the best owners in the league. They're incredible. I uh, got a lot of work done. It was productive, but uh, I think our fans can attest. They know uh, they know these guys like to have a good time as well and. I was definitely treated to that, and um, it was really good to catch up with them. And, and Todd was able to come in for a few days as well, so it was—it's uh, just so much easier in person there to, to you know, talk things over. And um, yeah, very, very fortunate to have all those guys. And uh, yeah, thanks. First, uh, just to reach out to them. Thanks for having me. So it's good to know the Devils owners uh, work hard and uh, and play hard as well. In in terms of that work, is there are there any secrets you can let us in on? What sort of discussions you guys were having? <laughs> Uh, probably good to catch up with them a little bit, but uh, it, it was good. A lot of future planning. Um, you know, a lot of the off-ice stuff Todd, Todd can touch on, you know, marketing uh, strategies, things for game night entertainment, um, talking about the new arena. They haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, and also, you know, recruiting strategies going forward and and kind of uh, our goals uh, short-term and long-term. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there, and uh, it's it's always productive. So talking about good stuff, it's another week, it's another signing, and this one's a pretty impressive one. Sean Bentivoglio, if I get the pronunciation right there. How excited are you about uh, this guy? Yeah, this one's, uh, this one's the big one, I think. Um, we've, been, we've been working at this one for a long time. Uh, went after him hard last summer, just wasn't ready to uh, commit. Um, obviously, he'd been in Asiago there in Italy for, for a number of years, but... Uh, we, it was a collaborative effort for sure. Joey Martin uh, has basically grown up with him. Uh, his older brother, in fact, was is very good friends with Sean. Um, Scott Hotham played with him in Asiago as well. They won a championship together. Uh, so we kind of had everyone going at him there. Um, we really, really worked on this one and couldn't be more happy. Uh, <clears throat> great skill set. Uh, extremely quick. First couple of steps. Good overall skater. Great playmaking ability and a very good release uh, on a shot. And above all else, his character. Uh, he's a real competitor. If you look, he's won multiple championships in Asiago. Uh, he's going to be a funny guy, an entertaining guy, I think, in the room. And uh, I just he's going to bring so much to this team, and, and we're just absolutely thrilled right now. Now, I, uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on him straight sort of off the bat, but when you look at his resume, you can't help be impressed by going to point a game in, in Italy. So... You're expecting Sean to come in, and I assume uh, be someone who puts up some impressive numbers in the elite league. Yeah, let's let's put the pressure on him. Yeah. No, it's uh, you know how our our team plays. It's it's always a collaborative effort as a group. Um, at the same time, you know these last couple of years we've been trying to find another guy um, that could really complement Joey Martin, uh, whether that's playing with him or on another line. Uh, you know, we've always had we've had two great teams offensively, but there was times when things went a little bit stagnant, um, and you know, Joey really had to carry the load. Um, where I think this is going to give us a nice one-two punch, along with uh, you know Aslan there and the guys we already have. Um, so yeah, I, you know, there 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 isn't uh, much pressure. It's going to be a team team effort for sure. We're going to win as a team. We're going to lose as a team. But uh, I definitely see his offensive upside for sure. And I think uh, the big thing around the league, in fact, for, for anyone that's you know, coming from another league is how quickly they can make the adjustment to our league because it is a d different style. Uh, you know, it's going to be more physical. It's going to be a little bit more um, you know, end zone play in our league as opposed to Italy. That's a lot of back and forth hockey. But um, because he's a competitor, he doesn't mind getting a little bit dirty there, finishing checks winning battles in the corners, I think he'll be just fine in our league. Now, you talk about that, that depth of scoring you, you've maybe added with, with Azalin and uh, Sean coming in to complement uh, Doucette and Joey, what have you. We spoke about how Pittsburgh played in the Stanley Cups and, and, and the role players they had and, and just the great job those role players did. Are you looking for maybe players like yourself, like Jake Morissette, the Joey Haddad, Chris Culligan? Does that give you a chance to be sort of more like role players this year and uh, do different things for the team? Yeah, I mean, we obviously want everyone scoring, but uh, I think I think it does. It does allow guys to maybe, um, you know, myself maybe sliding down a little bit. It, it'll depend, though. It'll depend on chemistry. 
we really want uh, multiple lines going. If you look around the league at, at all the you know the top teams, even even the teams that maybe haven't done so well in the past, they're really loading up. It's it's no longer um, you know have one high end line and then a second line that can chip in and a third line that just goes out and fills minutes, which is kind of how it was like when I came into the league a few years ago. Um, it really is about that depth across all fronts because the, the league's just improved so much and. Uh, you really need a bunch of consistent uh, high-end players that, that that are good all around, you know, defensively and offensively. And um, right now, I'm really happy with our mix. So I know you're not going to answer this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Ado and myself are sitting here preparing for this ice time interview, and we're playing a little bit of fantasy ice hockey and, and trying to work out where the gaps are and what lines you're going to go with. We think there might be two roster places left, and we were trying to work out, is it, is it two forwards or is it a defenseman and a forward? Because we come back to the Chris Culligan issue. <laughs> uh, you guys probably know as well as I do right now. It's, uh, it's really up in the air. Uh, these next, next, this next probably 10 days is going to determine a, a ton. Uh, it's been a little bit more delayed than we thought. Uh, a few unexpected things have come up, but... Um, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out, and uh, I think it'll it'll have a huge impact on uh, on our season. So, I guess you're you're keeping tabs on on what else is happening around the uh, the league at the moment. Teams starting to fill up their their rosters, although maybe Belfast and Nottingham keeping their uh, their cards close to their chest a little bit at the moment. But is it going to be traditional sort of big four up there again, or, or do you think Coventry will push with Danny Stewart in and? Uh, uh, you know, who, who do you think at the moment is is impression you recruitment wise? I think everybody looks really good. I think it's uh, uh, you know I thought last year was a great great year for the league, and I, I think it's grown even more. Uh, the standard, the quality of players now that uh, not only you know are thinking about coming to the league, but really want to come to the league. It, it's very impressive, and you know we we all know you know Sheffield, Nottingham, Belfast are going to be right there. I think Brayhead looks good. They're in a good position to acquire some some high end guys here late uh, in the or later in the off season. I think Coventry's put uh, put a nice squad together too. Uh, Matt Marquart played with them uh, on a line action. Oh my, I was uh, I was just texting him, giving him uh, a hard time. He, he uh, we we didn't talk too much, but uh, he's he's a big body. He skates well. I. I, I think they're going to be very competitive. Um, yeah, it's uh, and then you never know up north with uh, you know with Fife. They always put a good team together, and you know Dundee's definitely improved on uh, on their roster from last year. So it's it's going to be interesting. There's going to be no easy nights, and I think it's completely up in the air right now, really. Now, you and I uh, talk a little bit when you're in Cardiff, and you know me being a long-standing Devils fan, that, that league championship, not uh, having been in Cardiff since 96-97, and I pressed you for 30 weeks of last season about the importance of the, the league title, and you batted me off very well. But when you speak to these guys like Sean and, and when you're recruiting, is that one of the first key things you have to tell them, that the, the, the strange scenario in Britain that uh, the league championship is, uh, is perhaps the big one? And, and as you always say, you're playing game sevens really from the end of September onwards. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different mindset. Um, this is one thing we talked about with the ownership group and Todd there in Calgary was, you know, there's, there's two ways of going about recruiting. You can have a lot of turnover every year. You can keep your core group and try to build off that. Uh, and one of the benefits, obviously, with keeping the core group is these guys understand uh, the different format because it is totally different. Back home, you know, those years I played in North America, you come in and, and you're building throughout the season. Uh, and, yeah, obviously you want to win, you know, from October it is over there on. But, uh if you drop a game October 11th or you know January 5th against say a Sheffield type team, it's it's not the end of the world. Where we're over here, it's it's a big deal, um, and that intensity is just that much higher game in and game out. So absolutely, it's an adjustment, um, and you know we're definitely going to need to have uh, you know the new guys switched on for that. Uh, I've I've touched on it briefly, but. At the same time, uh, with the extended training camp here, I, I've tried to give the guys a little bit uh, extra, you know, time away from my voice, from me, right now, because uh, you know there's going to be more than enough time come uh, come August there to really get the guys on the same page. Now you might tell me to mind my own business on this one, but meeting with the owners, 
you're very highly regarded as a coach, and rightly so, highly regarded by them, by Todd Kelman, by the fans in Cardiff. But this is the third season now. Did you feel any greater level of expectation of the owners made anything aware to you, or, or is it just personal pride that, that you drive yourself on? Uh, very fortunate with the ownership group. You know, they, they want to win as much as anybody, but uh, they've never really come down on me. Same with Todd. And, and to be honest, uh, going into this job, I think my personal expectations are, are have been and, and always will be higher than uh, anything that can be put on me. So they've always been very high, maybe a little bit too high at times because I think I think that can wear you down slightly. But uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I think personally I learned a lot about um, – managing those higher expectations more so amongst the guys I think I think some of our guys put a little bit too much on themselves this year um, and, and you know you got to have fun you got to enjoy the game and and we're gonna we're gonna get back to that this year a little bit more and I'm I'm really excited with the group of guys we have signed up right now because I know the characters there uh, to, to handle those big games and handle that extra pressure especially down the stretch so um, yeah, it's it's good, and and I'm, I can't wait to get going. Really. So talking about getting going, it's it's pretty much a month the day that you're going to be on the ice in Cardiff uh, against KHL opposition. Uh, the preparation really ramps up now. You've got training camp planned, and uh, how excited are you? Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. It's uh, it's good. It'll be nice to move away from the recruiting here once we get the final pieces in place, and really uh, <clears throat> hopefully have a couple weeks to to get everything you know ready to go there. Get the schedule ironed out. Uh, and I can't wait for that first week. I think that's going to be a great learning experience. Uh, I think it's going to be a ton of fun having the guys around, uh, watching that team practice, then obviously getting to play against them. I think that's just going to be an awesome way to start the year, really open our minds and our eyes to uh, some different you know, style of hockey uh, and some things that we can add to our game to really improve uh, for when the real season starts. Now, uh, stepping away uh, slightly from, from uh, this year's Devils team, obviously the hockey community is a, is a small one and a close one. And in Cardiff, we were fortunate enough to watch Scott Matzka play for, for two years, including one year on a, a world record uh, uh, winning team. Uh, Scott's obviously been uh, subject of, of, of some tragic news, but uh, one that he's, he's showing great uh, motivation in, in battling and in his whole family and the hockey community is is standing with him none more so than Mark Richardson who made a, a superb gesture this week yeah it's uh it's unbelievable uh very very sad news obviously very challenging news um Scott was uh you know in fact he he really helped me out he was one of the reasons I came to Cardiff um you know, I'd been talking to Neil Francis there and uh he put me in touch with uh Scott and John Pelly and I think I had a Skype call with him and a phone call and uh, just, you know, just a great guy, great human being, great hockey player. And, and you can see, um, obviously, how he conducted himself and, and what he did for our organization because you can see now how people are responding. It's, it's incredible to see what's going on uh, with the fundraising stuff and, and the drives. And it, it's not even, uh, not even just the team. It's really the league and even just hockey. The hockey world in general is really getting behind this, which is exciting. Uh, and what can you say about Richie? Um, Todd told me that news the other, you know, last week I think it was, and I was I was blown away. It was uh, <laughs> it's pretty neat, but it just sums up what that guy what that guy uh, stands for, and and you know how he conducts himself, and uh, it'll be a special uh, special night for sure for Scott and and for everyone involved. Well, Scott was certainly one of my favorite devil players, perhaps of all time. So your message to not just Devils fans, but fans around the league, if you can get to that that game in October, uh, make sure you're there. Yeah, let's uh, let's fill that building up. It's going to be a special night, and uh, there's going to be a lot of energy for sure that uh, in that rink. So, Andrew, any uh, any breaks from recruiting now? I, I know things are pretty intense, and you're you're back training again. But uh, are you able to enjoy your, your last few weeks back home? <laughs> hopefully in a few days here or a week uh got a full slate of calls scheduled for this afternoon so that'll be good have the i'll have the ear pieces in uh <laughs> try not to crank the neck too much and yeah it'll be good and uh this weekend will be nice gonna go back and visit my folks so that'll be good to catch up uh watch the british open which is one that me and my dad always uh take a good look yeah. at and yeah we'll be uh we'll be flying out here soon though to get back and uh, it'll be go time so for those uh, those betting men and, and, and women amongst us, any tips for the Open? Who do you fancy? No idea. Uh, lost track of it a bit. 
obviously Dustin Johnson's playing uh, playing some great golf right now. Um, we'll see though. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, great to catch up with you as always, Andrew, and uh, hopefully same time next week. Perfect. You got it. Thanks a lot.